Miranda on the team. Pretty Pokeball, too. Alright, now we can... Uh, eh, there we go. Unfortunately, the first route's a bit rough for Shroomish. There's only that one Magikarp guy as an easy win. So it's gonna be a bit of a struggle to get Rhonda some levels. Does Zigzagoon get- no, stubborn, you gotta get some levels! Come on! Here's another thing, as I'm pointing out many a fact as I can about Pokemon Emerald. This fisherman was not here in Ruby and Sapphire. For some reason, they decided to add him in for this game only. Don't know why. I guess because they felt like they needed to add another trainer? But yeah, he's not there in Ruby and Sapphire. He's only here in Emerald. Oh, another. I missed it on the other route that we were just on. Not Petalburg Woods, but the one with routes. They have a different encounter. You can only catch Surskit in Ruby and Sapphire and not Emerald for some reason. There's nowhere in Emerald I think you can catch Surskit. It's still in the decks, but you just can't get it. Normally it would be on that route. Oh, I could. I might. I can just get the experience share and slap it on him. I, I don't think I'll probably do that. It's, it'll be good, because it's going to be a while until I get six Pokemon. Level 20 is not that hard to hit. But I'm not going to train him up now. I'll just wait until I get the experience share. Or I can just put him into daycare. I mean, it's not as long until I get the experience share as when I get the... Uh, my sixth member of Absol. Odds are what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep him as is, put him in the daycare, and then when I get the experience share, I'll take him out of the daycare, because I doubt he'll be level 20. Because honestly, this game is balanced around fighting every trainer, in my opinion. Like, if you don't fight everyone, you might be a bit under level. It gets a bit rough in the later levels. Early on, you think, man, I'm a bit strong. Maybe I should tone it down. And then, like, post-Norman, you're like, take your lumps. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I know we could do it in the, uh... Poke Park games. Oh hey, he's got an item. Alright. We're gonna be here for a while. Mr. C dot sir. Please, Mr. C dot. I mm. I'm not gonna think about that one. Let's keep that theory to the deviant art pages. I also found out. Um based on... This is unrelated to Pokemon Emerald, so for people that are new here, uh, me and my D&D &D group, we run a um, a Pokemon D&D &D system. Uh, we post it on YouTube and everything. We stream it on Twitch. It's on Tuesdays, so that's a regular thing. And we found out that a lot of moves don't work the same way in that system as they do in regular Pokemon as you would think. Like, obviously, nothing's gonna be number-for-number number static. But some moves just are changed completely. 
and Bide is one of those moves. For some reason, Bide works that you just sort of stack the power and you can choose when you send out the power in that system. You can wait as long as you want and do other things while you're stacking that Bide. It's a really strong move for some reason. I don't know why they made that change. But they did. For some reason. Uh, let's search for a Meryl. So wait, what route am I on? 103? I gotta check. Let's just walk back and forth. Oh, I could have just checked the sign out. It's too late. 104. Almost got the wrong one. Oh, hey, there's Meryl. You like Ludicolo, but why does it take so long to get a water stone? When's the water stone again in this game? That's a long ways away. I know the leaf stone, I'm pretty sure, is on the route with Feebas. No, Bide isn't... Well, it, okay. It's technically a counter move, but the regular counter moves are you take damage. That's not good. I might just kill it here. You take damage and you send it back. Bide's difference is that you target a Pokemon and any damage you take is... Uh, any, da any damage you take is sent back, but onto that targeted Pokemon. Because you can target a Pokemon with Bide, you can't learn on Wobbuffet because the idea is you shouldn't be able to target who you're hitting. You just sort of counter. I think that's the reasoning. If I'm going to be honest, I agree with you. Wobbuffet should learn it, but I think that's the reason why, specifically because you can target it. If that's all the reasoning I got, I'm not Nintendo. I don't know. Body is covered in water repellent fur. You heard it here first. Meryl have fur, they're not smooth. So it's hydrophobic. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the only other Pokemon. No, oh yeah. The only other Pokemon on this route that I can catch is a Talo at 10%. Don't know why. I have such terrible luck, and this Meryl is going to die in my pocket. Bye, Meryl. With finding this Talo, but boy, do I sometimes. Doesn't does it have a high encounter rate in the woods? Uh, let me Google. So this one's uh ten percent. Move on from this. Petalberg Woods. <laughs> Wait, is that? Yeah. Uh, it actually apparently gets worse in the woods. Out here it's ten percent. In the woods it's five percent. Um. So that sucks. Oh, thanks for the sub. Welcome back, Matthew. I thought you headed out. Also, you can now, you're one of the few people, because I only have two subs, that can enjoy my emotes. Came back just as Twitch Prime sub? Thank you. I actually, I'm not sure if you saw them. I had the new, yep, the Trap Pinch emote. I love that emote. I love all the emotes I commissioned. They're so great. I really like using them. The Trap Pinch one in specific, because I, that's why I put it at the first slot, because I think it's the best. My, it's easily my favorite. I really like the Snorlax one and the Umbreon one, but Trap Inch really... Mm, chef's kiss. Perfect. I was gonna say something, though. The... I'm going to head to the Petalburg Woods to catch Talos. Not specifically, but because since I have... four things to catch there... 
Yes, Umbreon is by far, in my opinion, the best special defense wall. But I'm going to go on that rant after I explain why I'm going to Petalburg Woods. There's four Pokemon in Petalburg Woods for me to catch. So my thinking is, if I'm going to not catch Talo either way, I might as well have the chance of getting other things. Because that means I have, what is this, a 30% chance to at least get something I need? So I might as well do it. Anyways, I can explain why I think Umbreon is the best special defense wall statistically. Because A, it got Moonlight. Fantastic move. You get health back. It has synchronized. If someone tries to status you, they get status back. Or you can just lead with B three or C, Toxic. To toxic them, so you can outstall them either way. Fantastic move. Then you teach it foul play so that you can deal damage to it without worrying about your attacks that in the slightest. Always just get foul play. Thanks for staying, Matthew, and thanks for the sub. Good luck with uh, the camming for those tournaments. That sounds actually pretty cool. I kind of wish I could do that. But yeah, have fun. And also, special defense stat is just really good. It's got a lot. It's got so much special defense and a really good regular defense too. Like, it's, it's regular defense isn't bad in the slightest. So we can just tank regardless. So yeah, that's my, that's my honest to god opinion on why I love Umbreon statistically. I also think it just looks really cool. And it's shiny is really cool because it's got blue lights. So yeah, I could rant all day about how much I love Umbreon. I got an Umbreon shirt on right now. It's hard to see because it's you, you have to zoom in, but yeah. I love that little boy. It's fucking Zigzagoon. Can we talk about how this person has a full restore that they're using on a level 7 Zigzagoon? Like... Calm down. Please. It's just a Pokemon battle. Ma'am. This lady is going all out. I just realized I have to edit a video and I forgot. I have to edit a video tonight. Running light screen on the ramp. I forgot I could learn light screen. That's also really, really good. Especially since they they took off Toxic from Umbreon, you can't teach it that move anymore, so... Sucks to be me. You can't have the Toxic Umbreon anymore. But it can still tank real good. Since Sword and Shield, I actually tried to bring my Umbreon in with Toxic, and they... Uh, competitively, you cannot have Umbreon learn Toxic anymore. So it unfortunately got nerfed. Pretty heftily. Ooh, a free potion. I don't know why they did it. Like, it's, it seems so weird, like... In Umbreon's Pokedex entry, it talks about having poison fur, I'm pretty sure. I'd ha I might have to check that again. But I think it's got, like, a thin layer of poison on its fur. So why can't it learn any poison moves? I, like, I never check out competitive meta in Pokemon. I just know because Sword and Shield forces you when you bring in Pokemon from past games to delete moves from them that they couldn't cancel learn anymore. They're starting to control the meta more at Game Freak. So you can't... Oh, well, I'm fighting this guy now. I didn't mean to. So you can't have certain moves on Pokemon anymore. They'll make you delete them uh, before using them. So I just have to suffer. It's super lame. Fortunately, still got foul play. Just saying. Plus, you can always use the classic... Um, Got Confuse Ray. That's a that's a decent alternative. Not great, decent. 
You could also still, if you have a synchronized Umbreon, give it the Toxic Orb, which is another option. It'll make your tanking limited, but on the flip side, then you could use the Flame Orb and burn your opponent with Synchronize, which is another option. Like, there's alternatives. Of course, Toxic was the best, but there's ways you can make it work. Unfortunately, I like sticking with the leftovers on my Umbreon, so I guess I have to suffer now. All I know about competitive battling is Dracovish with Vicious Yep, Strong Jaw, Choice Scarf, and Dire Hit. It's super OP. I don't play competitive Pokemon at all. I just know, like, vaguely some of the things, and that's one of the things I know is that Dracovish is busted. While I'm fighting this guy, I'm going to complain about something. Because you, you talking about Dracovish brought it up. I hate, hate the fossils in Sword and Shield. I know what they're based on. They're based on the original British archaeologists just taking random fossils, sticking them together and saying, this is an animal. And, like, historically, it makes sense for the reason, region. But, when you see any of the Zolt Pokemon, either of the Zolt Pokemon, and see that little electric raptor, I cry, thinking, why? Why can't we have an actual electric raptor? Why does Game Freak give us such a cute and incredibly endearing Pokemon design and just throw it out and chop it in half and torment us? I hate it. I love Draco, or I just like the Zolt if we got the full Zolt. If we had that little electric raptor, I would catch it. It would be in like my top 10 favorite Pokemon. Like for sure, I would love that. But nope. Nope. We have a genetic abomination that I feel bad for and might shoot because I think I need to put it out of its misery. That is my harsh opinion on the Sword and Shield fossils. I cry at night. I hope that maybe we can get some game that'll give us the original fossils, but I highly doubt it. We, we won't. And I'll just sit here and suffer. That's my rant. Yep, that, that's that. Well, now I'm gonna be here for a while, so the problem with me doing what I'm doing now... So is yes. <laughs> Flopped and Jack Googles, yeah, I don't let you... You Google those up. It is Draco's ult. Draco Vish, Arctizolt, Ar and Arctifish. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they took away the rock. Which is nice that they finally stopped giving fossil Pokemon the rock type, but that's not. I don't think that was worth it for what we got. I don't think it was worth it. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. So I know I'm going to be here for a while, by the way. Just trying to get... These three Pokemon. And I got a 30% chance of finding something new. And outside it's a 10% chance of just Taylor. But boy, this is... I still have a 60% or sorry, 70 of just anything. Have anything else I don't need, as we see here. I could catch a slack off here and use that, but I think I'll pass. It's a slack off family. But it gave <laughs> slacking the 670. They had to because slacking is. It's not great because of its ability. But when you take that ability away, or when it gets its time to hit, boy, it hits. Especially a slacking with Giga Impact. 
boy. Whew. Run for the hills, it will one-shot anything. Can't wait for Pokemon 2020 Spinosaurus to show up in Pokemon game. Basically, God, that's what the Pokemon fossils and Sword and Shield are like. Genetic abominations. It's horrifying. I just wish that they... Oh, hey, look, there it is. Speaking of the boy. Let's get a little HP back. We just absorb on this man. Ah, he is putting me to sleep. Ah! Okay. Can I complain about something, as you just heard? So my... My desk... Has a big ol' metal piece right here in the center that's used. So the way... I can't really pull out the camera to show you what I'm talking about. But it... Imagine a U. Base, or an N. Um, imagine an N, and that's the metal piece, and it's like... Here, let me get... It's like this thick. But it is right smack dab in the middle of where... of the desk. As you would say. I like, understand from a desk. So my brain is like... It doesn't realize that this isn't just a rectangle, there's also this hunk of metal, and I don't understand why it's like that. Like, what does this accomplish? Having this, like, end? What? It doesn't do anything. It's just extra metal that I bash my knee into. It basically scores a crit, because it hit me right in that little part of my knee. Like, yeah, I gotta pull my knee up. It, it, it hit me, like, right here, where there's, like, no bone. Just, like, pure muscle. Pure nerves and muscle. And boy. That was painful. <laughs> I felt it. I suffered right there. You could hear it. There was a thud. I hit it hard. I wasn't expecting to hit it. This is my life at this desk. It's a cool desk. It goes up and down, but I can't move it up and down because my shelf... Like, it's... I can't move my desk up and down because... It's not fully stable, so to speak, because it wobbles. So I have to have it basically pulled down all the way, because it actually goes up and down, uh, and then resting a little bit on this shelving unit I have, also. This boy. It swims in rivers. Imagine seeing a sloth just going down a river going like, And it's just going full speed down a river. But yeah, I have it resting on a shelf. My desk, that is, not a slack off. 